Yeah, I'm working on it. There's audio from the game going out, but the Discord is not. And it's off streamer mode.
Yeah, they are. So Brian McCarthy just said that they can actually hear us right now. I'm going to start giving shout outs to people on the stream uh, while we try to try to fix this. If I think they can hear, I think they can hear um, Ronan can hear. Oh, there's a, there's a voice they said, yeah. yeah. Oh, there you go. Right there we there. go. All right, big shouts out to uh, the real heroes here because we were already talking uh, everything we knew about Spa, multi-class, we were laying it all out there. Uh, but we've got a massive gang of people on the stream already who are helping us out. We're, uh, apologies for those audio issues. First round of the season, uh, we, uh, we have done this before. We're all very excited uh, and we're all a bit nervous. Uh, Niall, do you want to take it? <laughs> <laughs> throw, throw, me, throw me in at the deep end. Oh, um, I'll, 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 Just say, 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 say exactly <laughs> well, what you were saying five minutes ago when no one was listening. <laughs> Welcome to round one of the IDMC autumn season. For those of you who are joining us, this is round one live from Traff Bank and Sham. Uh, I really said that wrong, guys. Bank and Sham. <laughs> Anyways, I'm. I'm going to go um, and do what I'm better at because myself and Rob King are in the race stewarding desk. We've got three minutes left in warm up. As you can see, we've got two classes. You missed all of Lawrence's and Kevin's input into the multi class racing. But before I put my foot once again into my mouth, I'm going to head off to the race steward's tower and let Kevin and the ever capable Lawrence take over from here. Over to you guys. Thanks, Niall. Yeah, thanks, Niall. Um, look, uh, what can I say? It was late to the party, first of all, and then we kind of got covered. I'm delighted to be joined. It's an all court commentary box. I was almost tempted to come to give you a shout, Lawrence, during the, uh, during the week and ask you to come down and do it in person. Maybe uh, COVID restrictions alone might be able to do that later on. Welcome, indeed, to round one of the autumn season, the LMP2 and GT3 autumn season. We've had the supercars. We've had the touring cars. Now we're back to uh, what, what? what is kind of Lawrence iRacing's bread and butter, isn't it? The LMP2 and GT3 class. Yeah, I mean, the, I was saying to Niall there earlier, uh, the second you think of multi-class, you think of LMP and GT. You know, you think of LMP1s, LMP2s, you think of uh, GT, GTE classes. Uh, this is a, a quintessential uh, multi-class coupling of LMP2 and GT3. Um, there's not a huge amount of pace difference between them in a straight line at the lower speeds, uh, but once you get into those corners and those higher speeds, uh, it, there are differences. Um, those LMPs really catapult through those corners, um, and that's really scary to contend with uh, when you're an LMP, but also when you're a GT3, because you have to look in front of you, behind you, and if you're in the middle of a battle and you get into traffic or traffic comes up behind you, uh, that's a pretty tricky situation. So. I, I was saying to Niall, like, I'm, I, I feel sorry for Ronan tonight controlling the cameras because personally, I wouldn't want that job because there's going to be so much happening. There are going to be battles all over the track. We're lucky we're at Spa because it's one of the biggest and most iconic tracks uh, for multi-class racing. Loads of places to overtake, but also loads of tight, windy sections where sometimes it's best to just bide your time uh, and uh, maybe go for the move on the straight or into the next corner. Uh, but... In doing that, do you actually expose yourself to another person in the same class as you? So you really have to pick your battles. You really have to be disciplined. Uh, and I don't know if you've ever done a uh, multi-class at Spa, but uh, it's pretty scary and pretty hectic. This hour-long race is going to seem like an endurance race to them. Yeah, um, the last uh, endurance race it was actually this season, the first uh, VRS endurance, uh, see the European endurance race. And... I'd say I got punted about five times as a GT class, now bottom split, so hopefully we expect the standard to be a little bit better. The only thing I would say, though, uh, Lawrence, especially for, for a lot of the guys who are quite um, you know, experienced with this series, is, of course, we had TCR cars, which was single class, and we had supercars, which was single class, but we did have 
pro and ams mixed together so it, there was a there was a sort of multi-class racing in that as well and of course yes. these guys are well used to doing that back to front with the feature race being the front 15 swapped over uh, if you are new to the idmc series we've t- a one uh, an hour-long endurance race normally we would have uh, a heat race and then a feature with the first 15 swapped however it is a, uh, a one uh, hour endurance race this evening at uh, as uh, Niall's favourite track, Frost Bongham Champ, uh, Frost Bongham <laughs> Champ for the rest of us. Um, Oscar Mangan, our, of course, our championship winner last year. He's starting P1 on the grid, picking up where he left off. And then Timo Hayden, a new name uh, to myself, maybe not to some of you who are more uh, kind of indoctrined in the IDMC series, but good to see different, uh, different spread of nationalities there. Alex Dunn in third. Ronan Dardy then in fourth, Kevin Finn, a new name for myself as well, in fifth. Josh Malin, of course, uh, previous champion in the IDFC in sixth. Harold Sutautas in seventh, David Boyer eighth, Arturs Candelis in ninth, and Brian McManus in VRA Racing, rounding off the top ten. Then Valentinas Marchankovas, uh, there's no flag on that. I saw a flag earlier on, and um, we'll pick up that and see where he's from. Uh, Rory O'Shea then in twelfth, he's the first of the high pre cards on the grid. Uh, good to see a lot of different teams as well lining out um, Lawrence and different nationalities, attracting new nationalities all the time. Yes, new people uh, and uh, there's so much going on. There's so many people who wanted to be here but can't. Uh, for example, we've got uh, Jack Doohan who's actually in Spa at the moment testing his F3 car. He couldn't be here. He'll be here for the next rounds hopefully. And a massive gap uh, that I see anyway that jumps out to me is we really miss the guys from turn three. Uh, They're super fast, super competitive, uh, and we're not seeing them on the grid this year. Uh, They're focusing on uh, other tournaments and real-life racing as well, but they'll be sorely missed. Uh, But does that potentially give other people who were always in their shadow a little bit of an opportunity this season? Maybe so. We're ready for the beginning, of course. Lights don't go around until we go round down the bottom straight. Hopefully it's all clear and okay. You can see that gap between the LMP2s and GT3 cars already. That kind of is a cornerstone of rolling start multi-class rating. Oscar Mangan leading them out. It'll be interesting to see whether Timo takes him side by side up over Rouge or whether Oscar can get off to a clean start as we head down the hill. It's Radion actually. Uh, down the hill, Oscar already getting ahead and we're off. We are off on round one for the IDMC autumn season. Oscar does take that lead, but we're side by side between Alex Dunn and Timo Hayden. Alex is going to be down the inside. Timo's going to hold him off though. Alex forced wide. Relatively clean start with three wide off over going down the Kemmel straight as we see Timo now pulling out the outside for trying to move him in on Oscar. If he can, he's overtaken Oscar. Can he hold that? Going into the come. Oscar's got three wide again. Oscar just tipping in the head of Alec Don and Timo now uh, taking the lead. New boy, the championship is German. Second for the LMB twos, it's all relatively clean, uh, which can't be said for a lot of times. Even the EDMC that myself, the Jack and Ann uh, commentated on, definitely wasn't clean back then. But uh, but a couple of moves and shakers already in both classes. You see uh, Valentinus Machikovas having an issue. Kevin Scheider going side by side with Sergey Graben. Uh, Sergey, usual uh, mean face car. I'm sure somebody will be the actual name of that uh, <laughs> if they can. But yeah, that's good stuff. Here's Max Hart now in third position. This Max actually has a bit of a. Oh, my, oh, oh. somebody came out there and hit Max with the barrier. Oh, that's that is very that's disappointing. Pretty. Very disappointing. Max, joined, uh, Max, of course, a very established driver in real life as well. Uh, so he definitely won't like that in his first round. And here we go, Ser- Sergey Grabin. Gone off. Oh. Yeah, that's uh, that's coming through Piff Path, it seems. Uh, oh. right. No, it isn't actually. It's coming uh, on down towards the back straight towards uh, Bashima as uh, we're on board with Timo Hayden, who's ready to the start, but unfortunately, large. Those rejoins, you see it every year, just oh. rejoins. Can, you know, the sort of stuff you would never see at Mandela in real life unfortunately but uh, Max yeah. is already struggling with a, with a throat infection or, or at least a sore throat this week that's not going to be it, it really is a pity to see that because we had such a brilliant start and it's such a hard start I mean, going through Eau Rouge up Radion uh, in these high downforce cars but they do have cold tyres uh, the second they break out you're you're done you're goosed uh, so Timo is pulling out ahead uh, in the lead uh, we've got a couple of battles going on here in the LMPs it really is uh, we're, we're seeing people saying it on the stream that that was an epic start oh we've got a bit of contact here uh, that's a replay that's a, oh, I think those are the two Lithuanians turning Arias Romantis and uh, Tautis ahead of him not entirely sure or Martin Kremers maybe I'm not sure who it is oh it could be uh, a bit of a battle they're going on behind Oscar Mangan and Alex Dunn getting a bit tasty going down the Kevin straight this is true they come now this uh, 
famous section where you really have to open up this right-hander down in towards uh, Purcell uh, as that's going wide as Alex they are bump up to bump up. But he's holding it together nonetheless, aren't they? They're pushing really, really hard. Again, their tyres are still going to be very, very cold here. Uh, they're using every inch of the track that they possibly can. They have an incident limit uh, that they can't exceed tonight. Um, and if they do exceed that, they'll get a black flag. They might get a drive-through penalty. So they're really going to have to be disciplined about their track limits because the stewards will pull them up on that. Luke Tingar, the, uh, the Dane is in first position in the GT3 class, then between himself and the man we're looking at now. Uh, Rob Moore is uh, Peter Tan in the LMPs. He keeps going to slip past now through no name uh, over Luca. So Luca now has a. I'm trying to see what the gap is. We can't take our eyes off the action. We're trying to get to my <laughs> time. Yeah. We can't take our eyes off the actual action. Uh, Luca, anyway, leading the grid. He's a new name for us, Luca Tingard. Uh, we'll have to get him in to have a little bit of a, a chat with him. Uh, some of the big movers and shakers you can see it on the screen. Mark Kermit's Peter Kant, or oh, supposedly at 21 places. I'm not sure if that's necessarily correct. Could have been starting in the pits, perhaps, and overtaking the GT field. Uh, of course, our tourists can tell us up four places, along with Brian uh, McManus and Rory O'Shea up five places. So good stuff there from the uh, BRA lads. Uh, and making up some places with uh, the low turn, uh, turn three guys, of course, in this championship. Very disappointing seeing them back again uh, and do remember um, we're on uh, YouTube keep an eye on those comments uh, seeing some of you going back some potato nation are in as well for Lawrence which is great to see so nice to have you guys on board and I uh, hope you'll join us for all six rounds of what's sure to be a superb championship of course went down to the final eight uh, last year between a lot of the places uh, particularly in some of the classes there's a bit of a dive around the outside there and that is the I think on Kevin Shine am I right in saying uh, but I think Kevin holds on to that position and of course you know that we look at the pro and am category often but these gt3 cars they're so drivable and these guys have so much experience in them that you know it's going to be a super super competitive gt3 yeah as, as you mentioned the potato nation uh, they uh, they know as well as uh, as many people that i race with uh, gt is not my forte if i was doing this i'd probably go for an lmp car if i had the choice uh, those GT cars are very unforgiving but incredibly rewarding once you start getting the hang of them you really can't overdrive them uh, those tyres, the, the front brakes uh, tend to be uh, quite unforgiving uh, so uh, yeah, as we as we have a little bit of a, a, a gap here oh we see the uh, GT cars getting Evan. overtaken here um, and uh, I don't know, does Ser Sergei have a problem there or was he just letting off, maybe he was just waiting for the, uh, the windy section to um, to finish there uh, Maybe but it wouldn't be the greatest section I have to say if I, if I was him I'd be holding off to this it's a lot easier for LPs to get past but it's a good point Lawrence to say what those GT cars because they're extremely popular but as you say in all the bus buildings I'd say it's neatly unforgiving but that is yes you can't go for a lie on it on iRacing you see in real life oh there's a bit oh, of a oof. move there uh, Lane's pit service no it's Eden Handy actually going on Eden Fraz that down through um, uh, the double handed left hand of Kuan, um, that is yeah that was a, a, a great move he really did I don't know did he catch him off guard there uh, but that was a, an excellent move there by uh, I think it was by Eden or was it by uh, Dennis Eden on Eden uh, it was on Eden so it was Dennis Hanley Jr uh, that made that amazing move there um, loads of people chatting in the chat uh, just going to give a quick shout out to some of the people there uh, Chris Peterson Flea McBaggins Ginger Malteser Two Irresponsible Gamers Dog on Couch keep your comments coming uh, tell us who your favourite drivers are which teams you're supporting I think there's actually one, only one major team here I'm, I'm not too familiar with the other team names I didn't see in the uh, in the briefing uh, and I'm not seeing any team uh, channels other than VRA Racing uh, who have a good representation they have six drivers I think on track I think so, and obviously Hypri we've seen from time to time as well. They're uh, kind of regular competitors in this series. Good to see them. But some of course, next yeah. level racing, I think, that I see that name there as well. And of course, Team O'Reilly with Impulse Racing, who I don't know a huge amount about, but uh, looking forward to seeing uh, how he gets on. Of course, the team aspect of my racing. There's the very he's a man that we regularly see. Oh, Oof. nice move down the inside. Very so aggressive. Let's keep an eye on the two of them. Right now, they're, they've got the exact same pace. One of them has to back out. Well, they're, will they now? Will they? That's the question. They go too wide. Oh, ready on. The gap is There we go. There we go. 
incredible commitment. Uh, one thing that's uh, really worth noting, of course, Oscar Mangan, uh, the amount of times that commentators have said Oscar's name. As you see here, Neil Ferrier do another move on Keith Stewart. And Excellent move. On Made it stick. But a Danny Rick move there, Neil. <laughs> So uh, Oscar Mangan is being chased down by Josh Malin here. Uh, Oscar started at the front, if I'm not, uh, I think he qualified, well, I mean, he started in front of Timo anyway. Timo is showing lots of pace as a newcomer here. Alex Dunn, the youngster, who has shown amazing potential in the past, he's up there as well. So uh, those top four are particularly exciting. That's not discrediting all the amazing names that are just behind them. But uh, this is going to be a very interesting race. I can't believe we're not even 10 minutes into it. Uh, there's so much happening on track. Uh, it's, it's hard to keep track of. And it is, of course, very hard to keep track of what's happening in, uh, in G, uh, GT um, as well as the LMP. Because you see that uh, Luca uh, Tingard uh, is moving from Robert Moore um, in the GT class at the moment. Uh, so, and there's plenty. If you look at those little uh, the timings, for those of you who aren't familiar, timings that are beside the names on your screen, you can actually see the gap between them. So the gap that we're seeing right now, they are on top of each other. This is an incredible battle going on here. Uh, as soon as you get onto those straights, you start experiencing something called slipstream, where the car in front is actually breaking the air in front of you, and it gives you less wind resistance. So it actually, it's like uh, you have more power in the car than the car ahead, but you don't have to do as much work. Uh, so. Uh, it, that tends to give you a nice run to try and be able to get past them. So uh, as we see another great little pack here in the GTs, uh, some very varying lines going for the cutback here. Uh, this is David Freeman on Kevin Shine. Uh, Kevin Shine messaged me personally before the race. He said he needs followers on Instagram. So go look up Shine Racing. Uh, and he <laughs> he's not paying me for a shout out, but there you go. He's fighting for a top five in a real karting championship at the moment. Uh, and they need more followers on Instagram, so look up Shine Racing. Uh, <laughs> I had, had to do that so good. <laughs> Especially if he's going to... You're one constant away from a, from a worrying uh, Instagram handy there. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a really good battle between these three, going up and over the hill now. I think uh, Keith Stewart's going to have a run on David Freeman. David Freeman slightly goes forward. I think he's going to go around the outside. It's going to be a difficult one to make a stick. So again, once again, who's late on, latest on the brakes? And look, David Freeman is Kevin Shine slow ahead of him. That crouches them back up together. And, and up the outside. If Kevin can defend here, he can back the two of them up into each other. They can battle with each other, and Kevin can try to get away. He did a great job of defending. He didn't do too much work there, didn't exert too much force, um, and he is now further away from the two guys than they are to each other. So they're quite close to each other. Um, this is really exciting. Uh, it depends on who's faster through that middle sector. Yeah, it is. It's all about... It's, uh, that's the thing. It's such a technical track, especially that middle sector. It's so about getting those lines and trying to hit that uh, trying to hit that apex as early as you can and, and get on the loud pedal um, as Paul the rest of would call it run uh, board now with, uh, with a Canadian uh, Andrew uh, Torosetsky uh, Torosetsky should I say um, here in the, he's P30th on uh, track but uh, I think probably P7 or P8 uh, in class hard to see where the class is in um, interesting to see David Boyer down there in the LMPs he's got a really poor start but yeah, very interesting, Lawrence, to see in the uh, in the LMP class as well. Timo, a new name to the championship, uh, somebody we're not used to seeing uh, as much, but has already gotten off to a, a ferocious start and uh, potentially uh, uh, an outside shot of a, of a, of a championship winner. I mean, it, it's it's exactly what we want, isn't it? We want to keep people on their toes. We want to keep progressing this league. Uh, he's using every centimetre of the track uh, and he doesn't seem to be losing pace at all. In fact, he's extending that gap on Alex Dunn. Um, Oscar Mangan is still right behind Alex Dunn. Uh, that's going to be a hell of a battle if they can get that a little bit uh, tighter. But again, as I said earlier, if they start battling, P2 and P3 start battling, that just gives Timo more space out front. So if Timo in the later stages, when his tires start giving out a little bit, if he makes any mistakes, as they come up to the GT cars here, these are the leaders going, navigating the GT traffic. You can see Oscar really struggling here behind the GT car as he finally gets past. Um, Alex Dunn just cleared about 1.3 seconds because of the traffic uh, as we go past um, uh, the, uh, uh, the GT uh, cars that we were actually looking at earlier, same cars. Uh, so. Uh, Oscar is uh, catching Alex a little bit there, and um, he uh, he really got done there by that traffic, didn't he? 
Yeah, well, look, the famous phrase, traffic given, traffic taken away. Uh, we are gonna, I'm going to just quickly go back to the action here. Is, uh, Aeneas Petrovicus uh, has a battle here with Dennis Hanley Jr. Um, next to him, I think. Oh, no, he's Ed, he's Ed, Ed Finza behind him, sorry. And then Dennis Hanley in front. So there's a bit of a pack out of three of them. Sorry, it's uh, Ed, Ed Finza near Ferry, I should I say, in that pack. Um, battling there in the midfield with the GT Trash. But yes, traffic given, traffic taken away. And Look, I, we are both uh, very, well, Lord think you're a bit, of a, a bit of a better driver, not a lot better driver than you see. You've got a podium in the previous IBMC incarnation, but um, it's all about patience when you're in the higher classes. So, oh, as he tries a bit of a move there, uh, down the inside, then Andy Jr., not quite sticking for him, uh, but uh, we go on to back straight. But yeah, it is all about patience, isn't it, Lord? Because, look, it's an hour long race, 150 minutes in. No doubt Alex at some point will have traffic. That will allow Oscar back into it. It's just about making sure you make your intentions very clear to the GT cars and that everybody knows where everybody's going so nobody turns in the lead. That's exactly it because it doesn't matter how much pace you have or whatever, one slight mistake can ruin your entire race. And we're watching an absolutely epic battle. What I love about these races, what I love about this series, look at that, around the outside, uh, through the bus stop, uh, and oh, uh, Dennis is after losing, is he losing two positions? No, he's got it back there. Uh, but uh, Linus, beautiful overtake. He's got the inside for this corner. We'll see if Dennis actually goes for the cutback. Dennis is slightly behind him, uh, but he's exposed the inside to Eden there. And Eden might actually overtake Dennis here. They're side by side, going up. Uh, they're going through a route in a second. Uh, up Radion, again, side by side. Uh, Aiden is licking his lips because he knows he's going to have slipstream, if not double slipstream. And he's already making a move. He's on the inside. We've got Linus behind now. Linus does have an opportunity on slipstream because he's getting it so early. Don't be surprised to see him back beside uh, uh, Aiden and Dennis. Uh, here we go. He's going for it. They are moving all over the place. Uh, good defensive line there at the front. Um, absolutely incredible. Like, this is for P20. Um, this is, I guess they're up in P, what is that, P5, P5. P6, um, uh, and like absolutely incredible racing. And um, the last thing they want right now is for this battle to be ruined by a massive pack of LMP cars. Uh, but as far as I can see, uh, there are none for a couple of seconds, but that can all change so quickly in multi-class racing. You, n you just never know when they're gonna come around the corner. That's it, and, and it does, it's a funny sort of position that, that groups of cars, particularly groups of GT cars are in. Uh, as Lauren, uh, Lawrence, you can hear talking into your favourite brand of beer insert here. Um, <laughs> I'm, prof I'm professional tonight, I'm just having a, a, a can of Coke tonight. Just a can um, of Coke, it's pretty damn white there, Jesus. Actually, that's not, it's, it's not uh, an issue. Um, but Luke Pingar going through there, he's in first place. Yeah, just so, as you're as you're talking into that uh, well-deserved one, uh, Lawrence, I wish I had a bottle of water on it. Um, you know, it, it is a fun position that GT, Pax of GT has a pain because they, they almost have to work together in a way to allow LMP traffic through whilst also keeping the foot in. And, and if, you're, if you're in the middle of that, if you're, a, in this case, a Rob Moore, it's a very awkward position you're in because you leave an LMP by and all of a sudden... Of course, you do have a mandatory pit stop. Uh, in this uh, race, a mandatory pit stop between all classes, which means that drivers have the opportunity to set fuel and set tyres. Uh, whether they choose to take tyres, I imagine they won't be all around Spa. I'm surprised if they did. Uh, but how they time that fuel, and, and most importantly, how, uh, of course, it's all, the, all the pit stops in the race are the same. Um, how they manage to time their their exit coming out of pits uh, along the pits as well uh, at Spa from the shop and then other courses. It's Tony Saxon put out the inside. He is going to GT and he slightly loses it under braking, but it's going to be a stick. No, there is contact from the GT car. And that is frustrating when you're in GT3 car. We see an LMP2 dive down the inside and then it gets slightly wide. Uh, in to you on the exit, that's been very frustrating. What's the bonus stack? It's about a case of strength and cover out of the in front of him. And he also, of course, has Tony Stark now climbing up all over the back, and he's made the most of that bad exit by Tony Stark. These two guys know each other very well, They're raising the IDMC for quite some time. That timing tower is flicking back and forward as Tony uh, gets done by Ronan on the brakes through the come. And uh, now it uh, looks like uh, Ronan's going to have that run as well down the hill into Bruxelles and just a, again a, a brilliant move as well by Linnaeus uh, going back to that uh, on, uh, on Dennis Hanley I think uh, 
going through that uh, that bus stop chicane. That is a textbook way of doing it. These guys, some of the overtakes we've seen, I mean, I mean some of the overtakes we saw in the Supercar Championship, given how they were uh, close diff, is, is incredible. Um, and some of the some of the racing, some of the some of the overtakes we've seen here are so brave. Now that's a, a difficult one if you're you know Ferrier, you have a you have a GT going, Ron White himself and Newton Elliott coming up the left hand side, which makes it more difficult. He's even friends are behind him. That's David Wire, I think, trying to make his way through the pack in the tricolor uh, livery. The, uh, the, uh, that's the word is actually. I was going to tell you his number. It's Carol. That's what that is. Uh, but we're going to stay on board with the great Another other people coming up behind him around the outside. Oh, it's all a bit sketchy. And that's the thing, Lawrence, about these races. You have periods where it's kind of fine and dandy and you're kind of driving off the back and driving into the like motorway driving. Kind of following the driver, he was at the LMP2 was around the outside, he clips the grass, and amazing, the amazing. And then you have periods as this, in the race where it's just bananas, and it's about surviving those, those half a lap to a lap where things go mental, and then being able to stop it. Of Dennis, very brave. Flashing his lights, of course, just to let the GT cars uh, know that the headlights oh, you have a bit of contact there uh, with one of the GT cars. That's very unfortunate because it was actually a very clean move. Uh, that uh, did seem uh, very unfortunate for him. Uh, as you were saying, uh, the, the LMP cars, they can be out on their own for quite a while, then all of a sudden they come up to GT car cl um, traffic, and it's very hard to uh, remember that they're not as agile through those corners. So when you do run, when they do run wide, uh, all of a sudden they're encroaching your space, uh, and it can be very, very confusing for both drivers. And they, as you say, they are very wide. They're almost the, the width of, a, of an SUV. Um, the GTV trees are slightly smaller, but still, um, modern race cars, we often say it, they're still getting bigger and bigger all the time. The Formula 1 cars are getting bigger and bigger all the time. It makes it more, there's less space on, on, on the same size roads. I know anybody who probably owns an SUV and has to drive down Irish country roads probably knows exactly what they're talking about. Um, but yeah, the, it is makes it more difficult. There's, there's less space on track than there was before. You have to be a lot more aware. Now, a lot of these guys, are, of course, are running triple screens. Some of them running VR. But for, for, for single screen peasants like myself and some others, it is very difficult to judge those distances of Oscar Mangan all over the back of Alex Dunn. Now, this is an interesting question, Lawrence. I'm going to put it to you. If you are Oscar Mangan in this place, position, do you just bump draft, essentially, Alex, the way you're going? Or do you go for them? Uh I think Oscar's going to go to the, for a move. I think Oscar doesn't want to rely on Alex here. Now, if Alex is carrying good pace, then great. But if Alex was cut, um, carrying particularly good pace, uh, then maybe Oscar wouldn't have caught him uh, and wouldn't be so close to him right now. It's definitely going to be interesting. This is the battle to watch right now. Uh, and as they come up to trap, oh, he's definitely not going to stay behind him. Oh, that's an incredible, incredible move. Uh, very late on the brakes. Uh, we know Alex is super on the brakes, so for Oscar to make that stick and to stay ahead, he's so far ahead of him now. Uh, of course, he's going to come back in the draft, but that was an incredible move. Especially in the LMP2 cars, as, as anybody who's driven them knows, that you can be a bit squirty on the brake, and you can that new braking phase, you get a bit good traction initially, and it's about trying to get off that pedal, as we say, trail braking, it's called when you sort of leave out the pedal. Oh, Oscar dipping is tire in the, in the track and somebody tipping out from the outside that's just Malin out of nowhere with the player player three has entered the race Josh Malin <laughs> we completely didn't even mention him because he wasn't in the game and here we go he just put in his token inserted his coin and there he is and all of a sudden Alex Dunn has it all to play for Oscar Mangan's getting away that's a, that's a good job in haunting Josh Malin I think <laughs> what, a what a move what a move Really late and just totally caught uh, Oscar, uh, not Oscar Mangan, uh, Alex, Alex Dunn by, by surprise. I don't think Alex was, was expecting to move. flashed the lights there, Alex. Uh, but so, no, was that out of frustration? Or there's, every, there's every chance that Alex wasn't expecting that move, but I also think that there's an outside chance that he was being extremely disciplined there because that was an aggressive move and he didn't know if Josh was coming up so fast that he was going to actually end up beside Oscar Mangan, which could have presented Alex with the opportunity. So maybe that was just very clever, very safe endurance racing. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing. It's about, we, we say, I said the same thing with Jack. We say the same thing all the time. It's, it's about decisions. It's about making good decisions. It's about knowing when to pick your battles. And speaking of battles, here's Josh coming back, back Alex coming back on Josh. Josh going to hold down the inside. And he's going to again use that GT car just to squeeze 
Alex out of the picture. I think that's Sergey Graben in uh, that unique livery. And again, Josh, uh, Alex all over the back of Josh. Now, will he try and lay, move down the inside? Josh going to hold the outside line. Alex isn't going to make that move down the inside of the source. And they Ooh, carry a on. A no, a bit of a slide by Josh. That opens the door now for Oscar to go back for Alex. to go back at him. Uh, Alex has the pace. He's just going to stay behind him, I think. They're almost locked in to get over there. It's a little bit of clipping there, I think, almost uh, in the game. But technically, no contact. Oh, oh my God. God. Look, Look at this. They are literally bumped Justin down the Camel Strait. I have never seen this before. Well, they mean business. They both want Oscar. But very clear. It is interesting to see because these guys, of course, race quite a bit together, Josh May and Alex Dunn. I wonder on the voice chat, will there be a little bit of talking? Will there be a little bit of tactic going back and forth? Of course, they're not the same team. Uh, but there might be, you know, you, you never know. These guys in these positions, they might realize what's going on. Um, Alex, I think, to be fair, um, Alex is a bit like uh, IDMC's answer to Max Verstappen when he first came into the series. Certainly when I saw him in the uh, in the Brands Hatch in the series, we saw with, uh, with the likes of Josh Rogers and, and, and uh, some pro drivers. Uh, very, very aggressive and, and trying to take every single opportunity that's available to him. But Alex, we've seen over the last number of seasons, has really, um, really got his decision making on point. He really knows when to push, he knows when to pull back. I wonder, and Alex done in the previous reincarnation, we tried to send it down the inside, it could be perfect for both of them. But now he knows 25 minutes into the race, there's a long way to go, it stops to go as well, and um, still a huge amount to go. So it's about now. Alex, if he can stay behind Josh and he get that slip screen as we were talking about Lawrence, not only does he get the speed, but of course the lack of wind resistance on the car also means the car burning less fuel. So if Alex wants to push a little bit longer, can potentially push a lap further, and that might help him with the overcut, uh, the overcut when he hits later than his competitors, uh, with an opportunity to run a faster laps, win clean air. Uh, and then have an opportunity to overtake them in the pits, as we say. So, um, strategy we will see now coming into the QG. I wonder if that's what Alex Bunn's game is. Is he, is he just trying to eke out that extra couple of uh, points of meters that will get him to his pit stop and potentially give him a chance to Yeah, it gets incredibly complicated at that stage, especially if you don't have a spotter, if you don't have a team behind you. Those calculations are almost, as we see, an incredible move here on Neil Ferrier. Um, that was uh, Linas who just overtook Neil, I think. Uh, um, yes, that was Linas. Incredible move there. Uh, and Aiden, uh, these three have been together. Uh, Kevin Shine was with them. He may have he dropped off the pace slightly. Uh, he may have pitted. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I don't think he pitted. I don't know what happened in there. Uh, but Kevin was involved in this battle. Uh, but uh, yeah, incredible racing. And they're still uh, going after that 20th place. Dennis Hanley is a little bit up the road from them. Uh, so, as we see a replay here of Luca Pingard uh, coming into the pits. He was just about to say, Lawrence, the leader in the GT's pitting now. Interesting to see what the others will do. Um, anybody who knows iRacing knows that pits here about 40,000 times from the iRacing spotter uh, <laughs> when they go in. So, no doubt the drivers behind will know uh, that Luca Tingard is has decided to pit. So, now the onus so is on the rest of them. Watch this here, Kevin, because there's an LMP car coming up. Um, in GT, one of the easiest ways to get an overtake, especially when the rules are as they are here, where you have to get out of the way of the LMP car effectively, that often opens up the gap for another GT car to sneak through. So, unfortunately, they're on the straight. Unfortunately for us, uh, fortunately for them, uh, so that LMP car is going to sneak through. But if they were just about 10 seconds later, this would get very, very spicy because they're in the heat of battle, but they still have to uh, give some respect to that LMP car. Yeah, they do have to give some respect. Now, unfortunately, a lot of these guys will know that, that GT racing, I suppose, for those of you who watch Formula 1 uh, and will be familiar with the blue flag rule in Formula 1, um, where drivers pull out of the way, basically, and pull in as if it's like an ambulance behind them. They pull in and slow down. Um, that's not necessarily the same case in GT Class. It, it, you still run your lines, you still run your same race, and the person behind you is still expected to the pits. So there is a certain expectation. GT cars, oh, as one of them comes out of the pits there, uh, yeah. almost got on a B car. There is an expectation in GT cars to make it easier for the other cars. But it's certainly not a case of pulling over and so on. Yeah. There, there is discretion advised, but one of the rules for this series, I was in the driver's briefing there earlier, and they actually said that it is on the GT class to allow a safe overtake. So they don't have to rigidly stick to their lines. They do have to be predictable, um, but they do uh, have to 
give way effectively for the uh, the LMP cars, which is quite interesting uh, because that's not what we've done in previous seasons, uh, but it does add an extra element here. So if you do see those GT cars making an effort to get out of the way, uh, it's because they were advised to do that in driver's briefing. Uh, I wouldn't want to be a steward on it today, tonight. No, it's a, t it's a tough one, but to be fair, there's been some really clean racing. Apart from that early, early incident with Max Hart, where he uh, somebody pulled out in front of him, largely it's been very good, and I think that's like a slight move lost off as well by a GT car and an LMP. Um, the racing's been quite clean. Now, uh, Lukas uh, Lenkiewicz is in the pits. He is, that was on the Texan Prime, he is in fourth position at the moment. Victor Cullen now, of course, topping the, uh, the timing sheet, but uh, pit stops will come, so we'll watch the space now. Now we're also going to be the cars. Uh, interesting, I'm not sure what the fuel tank location is on these cars. Normally, a GT car would be not run an hour uh, without it, whereas an LMP car is only about 35 to 40 minutes, depending on how economical you are on the tank. As we see a good battle here, Victor Cullen leading on the road. So these guys in uh, currently in uh, P1 and P2, probably provisionally further down. Don't expect to see Victor Cullen battling up the front uh, from the end of the race after it stops everything going as it should. Um, but yeah, we're about, about we're approaching the halfway point of this race, and this really is, Lawrence, the time where we start seeing the movers and shakers and start seeing guys start putting fast as that. Exactly. You could, you could end up. Uh, coming back out in the lead and all of a sudden you're behind a GT ca uh, class car you are racing for position but you've got a pit stop as we see an incredible battle here with uh, Josh Malin again put, coming up through the GT cars uh, they're so low and fast those LMP cars uh, it's just so intimidating to see them coming at you uh, a beautiful train here Josh is doing his best but Oscar Mang and Alex Dunn will be in half a second and they're navigating traffic yeah, it's such a difficult, such a difficult uh, area, but Josh is just so, so supremely consistent in whatever he drives. I think it's important for our company. It's like, oh, there's a big instant behind there. That looks like it could be Alex Dunn. Oh, is it Alex Dunn? I can't see. Look, we're, looking, we're looking at the gearbox lights, we're looking at the back side, uh, and that's Alex coming through. He clips the GT. Oh. Yeah, that hunt slipped into the barrier through no name, tried to go around the outside of the GT. Car. Oh, and oh, another one as he comes through, and that is not carrying the No, he was. Oh, geez, that was horrible for him. He he is still in P4 by the looks of it, uh, but he's going to be carrying some damage, and he might be forced into an early pit stop. There might be. No, those LMP twos are tanks. Uh, to be fair, you can take <laughs> air hammering uh, without uh, suffering major damage. It is a difficult one. It's a tough corner to overtake, and that's the thing you see, um, Lawrence. And th those who may not notice, you can see the huge rear spoilers that these LMP2 cars are. They almost look like spaceships, and they're all built around the aero. So uh, while the GT cars, you'd say their tires are, are better, better grip on the tires at low speeds. Uh, certainly, the aerodynamic capacity of these LMP2 cars means that uh, kind of high aero corners high speed corners at faster speeds than the GT cars and also they can be a little bit tidier as this is the two returning again now Alex forcing that GT car that wide that was the same GT car that kicked into the barrier I'm not sure if Alex is a little bit of a uh, bad feeling there from Alex uh, after that incident but that is one of those corners no name where when your GT car you're on the limit it's Harold goes in on uh, Arius Humantis these are the two Lithuanians going side by side a bit of an Eastern European battle as uh, Harold Pull out there of his uh, former teammate, those two ran together in fast cars thousand this year. Uh, two good buddies and two uh, good team competitors uh, to race between those two. But yeah, it is one of those things, uh, Lawrence, where I think the LMPs sometimes don't give credit um, to how difficult high speed corners are for GT3 cars, and that if you're in a GT3 car and you're in a high speed corner, then sometimes your car is going to push out wide, you're going to get that understeer where your car can't quite turn in as much as the LMP2 cars, and going around the outside of the GT car is always a, a, a risky strategy. Yeah, and sometimes you have to take that risk. Uh, Alex was so close uh, to Oscar, uh, he had that slipstream, uh, and he was going to be right behind him again on the straight. Uh, the margin for error is small, as we saw there. Uh, that, it seemed to me like a racing incident. Again, I'm glad I'm not a steward. Yeah, indeed, it'll be a difficult one for our stewards uh, around our, our Larry Rob King. Hitterman, cameras, Conan Dougherty's on track, and Rob King's in the steward box. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but he got we're, there eventually. Uh, Ronan, uh, sorry, 
Go ahead. So, sorry, we're, we're getting some shout outs on the uh, on the stream. People see, are very excited. There are more chat messages than we've ever had. I think. Um, people are giving massive. Pro oh, this is just a replay of what happened. Alex, did he, he return to the pits there? Um, not 100% sure what happened. Ooh, he's there. Just connecting, is he? I'm not sure. Oh, I hope um, that's not the end of his race. I hope, I hope not either. It'll be good to see him back in hand. Uh, yeah, yeah. Huge, huge props are being given to Ronan, who's on cameras tonight. They're really enjoying the cameras. They're enjoying the replays. We seem to be catching a lot of the, uh, the action. Uh, they're seeing the cars sound incredible as well. There is an energy on the stream. Uh, and uh, keep your comments coming, guys, because this is uh, this is exactly what we want. We want people. To, and if you haven't if you haven't hit thumbs up, if you haven't shared it yet, uh, do it. Share it with your communities. This is great racing. We're on lap 17 here. We're about halfway through the race. Uh, just do, do enjoy it. Do share it. Uh, this is on every Wednesday night. We've got uh, five more rounds after this. Similar format for each one of them. Uh, and uh, it's only going to get more intense as the season goes on. And as you say, Lawrence, halfway point of race. A good time. Are you looking to get involved in I'm not sure if we uh, just lost Kevin there, uh, but halfway point in the race, uh, it's a good time for the ad. We stock everything from wheels, pedals, PCs, cockpits, right through to fully built custom turnkey sim solutions built to meet your specific requirements. For official distributors for the best brands, including SimLab, Fanatec, Crossmaster, Cube Controls, Hoosing Belt, Simicube, Simtag, Next Level Racing, Grid Engineering, and many more. We offer fast, reliable worldwide shipping via DHL, and we also run some of the most competitive online racing needs in the world. Check out digitalmotorsports.com today. They say that perfection doesn't exist in this game. Most players just don't have it in them. But those who dare to seek it might catch excellence. And that sounds perfect to me. So, I'm done playing. Let's drive. Enjoying what you're watching and want to become the next sim racing star? Here at digitalmotorsports.com not only can we supply all the parts but we can custom build your dream simulator rig from start to finish. Just like we have done for world famous drivers like rally legend Craig Breen, drift superstars James Dean and Connor Shanahan. We can build, deliver and set up your full custom simulator rig in your home and offer round the clock support to keep you racing to the top. To find out more visit digitalmotorsports.com. And welcome back. Uh, look at us going all American with our picture in picture. It's amazing. <laughs> I'm blown away I'm... with that. Uh, Niall, uh, uh, Niall Mark joining us. Hi, I'm Tom. I've been dragged down from a very uh, active race control. Myself and Rob are looking at those race one incidents. We can say that, unfortunately for Sergey, it looks like he just caught the curb um, all on his own and I'm just got a tank slapper on so that's that's just a pure racing incident we're looking still looking into the Max Hart incident which has ruined Max's race uh, unfortunate rejoin so obviously there'll be penalties there and it does look like uh, Alex is actually disconnected um, what an unfortunate way for Alex to go out we never like to see that guy right it's just uh, unfortunately a racing incident there is a suspicion of net code which is always the Achilles heel of, of sim racing but um yeah, very active in 
raised control for the first half an hour and it's actually it's the most active we've ever been on the chat as well so i don't know lawrence what type of fuel you've thrown on the fire here for tonight's race but certainly uh you, you've brought the potato nation in full force out for this one <laughs> the potato nation uh, are are excellent on any stream if you ever need contract uh hires for people to come and give energy to a stream <laughs> i'll tell you what those the potato nation does it in spades and they're giving massive shout outs to a load of drivers as well uh they're they're really support they're not just here for the racing they are here for the drivers but it looks yeah you could, i'd love to have them over for my birthday it'd be great everyone will think of <laughs> uh, going thanks to everyone honestly seriously thanks to everyone Just yeah and, and uh, what a job ronan's doing sorry for putting across kevin um i tell you what i'm, I'm kind of glad i stopped doing the cameras and i'm, I'm starting to do the race control so big shout out to ronan I was looking at that whole ad sequence in the middle and I was like, how does he do that? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's world class and it's, it's, it just shows the progression. Um, it's making our life easier as well because uh, we're seeing the action and we're able to commentate on it in a more natural way. We don't need to worry about where those cameras are. We're seeing those replays instantly. So everybody's up to date with everything that's happening mm -hmm. at all times and the action is quicker than we are at the moment. Yeah, a huge absolutely. shout out. Sorry, a huge shout out there. See, uh, Flea McFaggins, obviously one of the Play Nation, Lawrence, but he'd say never rage quit, and I couldn't agree more. Um, it is unfortunate to see the incident so far, but one hell of a race. Kevin, what's your take on things so far? Yeah, very interesting. Um, look, Timo is, is fake and mint to me of these guys. I didn't think there'd be somebody jump into the championship and be quick so much, but 7.6 seconds off the top. Um, the G23 class is still interesting. Um, of course, we have Luca Tingard, uh, who is certainly entered to pick P1. Uh, he's P4 on, at the moment, but still waiting for pit stops, etc., to work themselves out. We're most fortunate to so not sure Niall will um, inform us in terms of how long we expect the G2 cards and LMP cards to be able to run um, with the full tank before they have to pick. Yeah, uh, well, the race strategy is obviously going to come down to what fuel mappings and, you know, tyre wear, all, all of that. We're expecting the tyres to actually start coming back now. Obviously, the track temperatures are changing uh, dynamically with the with the night as well. Um, the drivers will, I, I, if it was me within the GT3 Cup cars, I'd probably be trying to get as much as I can. We could be into the 45-minute region, we, we're estimating. So within the next six minutes, we should start seeing coming in but if you're managing fuel you can go the whole way that's that's the big news in this lmp3 would be a different story because obviously going fast there's more aero um and those big fuel tanks in them so we'll we'll have to wait and see it looks like um, we've had a change of position up at the front josh malin has been overtaken by oscar mangan um, so this is the battle to watch right now these two know each other incredibly well uh, Niall, what did you make of them last season well they're world class, you know, and, and every time we mention either, you know, Josh or um, Oscar, you're always looking for the turn three guys as well. And unfortunately, the turn three teams, that a lot of the drivers, well, not are already quite competitive, uh, um, as is Keith is out car karting, and I believe Peter's really busy with the uh, uh, IndyCar series, so just the timing this time of year is great for those guys. But also, they're not huge fans of long endurance style races like this. They like the shorter sprint races, you know, with the reverse grids. Um, and, and I have to say, I'm a big fan of that as well. Having said that, lads, have I mentioned up until this point that I did win a 24 hour race at Spa, uh, Frank Earl oh. Champ. <laughs> here, we, here we go, tell us. <laughs> Let me tell you that story. <laughs> so a huge shout out to everyone on the stream. I've never seen so much crack like this going on. Uh, Jitter uh, Malteser, yeah, you're absolutely right. Chris McCann, as always, Chris, such a huge support for the whole community. So a huge shout out to uh, to Chris as well. And um, Alex Stone has just joined us. Uh, Alex, obviously on the chat, giving his inputs. I think um, never rage quit, but at the same time, if your car is that damaged and you're here to win, we respect that as well. But it's yeah. very sad to see Alex uh, race end in in that way. It yeah, is different for you. and it's it is sorry, Lawrence, just as well. Right. To, we're air, if we are airing um, uh, confessions or airing, then Aaron said he, he just didn't see Max. I think and he had no clue the chief call, so he just he, he started to be blind and then kind of realised it's too late. Um, so 
to be fair, no malice on either part. Uh, with Alex, I can completely understand if you can't do a straight line, you become you become more of a nuisance than anything else to some of the other competitors on track. And it's probably best to pull over and and and, uh, and take your medicine. Very disappointing for Alex, but uh, mm. look at him in the chat. And like I said, um, when Alex wants to back to me, hopefully he does. Heard my you know, just his his maturity and, and like I say, he's like the Irish back of that, but he's so much pace. And I think we questioned some of his decision making uh, a couple of years ago or a couple of seasons past, but his his overall drive um, in this series, I think personally has come on leaps and bounds even in the short time that I've seen um, you know, we talk about potential and turning potential into into actual great speed sort of maturity track and decision making he's showing I think shows that those race wins won't be long down the road. Yeah, we used to have a time in sim racing where, uh, you know, stuff would happen on track, dark race stuff, and people would kind of almost uh, smugly say, oh, well, that would never happen in real life racing. We're at a stage now, for many seasons now, where the stuff that we see is stuff that happens in real life. These incidents really do happen, uh, and the quality of driving is... Uh, just absolutely exceptional. You're always going to have incidents. You have incidents of every class out there. Uh, but to see these, this few incidents with so many cars, we must have, uh, how many cars do we have tonight? I'm not even sure. Are there 50 cars on the track? Yeah, I believe so. Um, I believe we, 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 were, we were nearly fully subscribed um, in the full class. But to that point as well, if you ever want to have a look at what it really looks like in the real world. Let's go back and watch the 24 hours of, of Spa this year. Like, there's an absolute... They're still picking up the fiberglass um, and, and the carbon fiber from, from that event. But uh, what I'm going to do is... Uh, <laughs> Rob is actually um, looking at a couple of events. So I have to go back to my real daytime job here as race steward. I'm going <laughs> to let you two guys um, uh, focus on the last 15 minutes of this. And it looks like it's really turning into some battle. Uh, Josh and Oscar up front. And uh, Dennis Hanley Jr. Uh, like, and Robert Moore. Like, don't forget these GT3 cars. This is this is the really where I'm excited about the most is this this pro am class and seeing these drivers come into the pro. So without further ado, I'll just mention it one more time. I did win a 24-hour race here. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'll be back for the interviews, guys, and hopefully we get to talk to the uh, to the podiums um, to classes. Over now. Talk to you soon. To be fair, I do remember that spa 24 hours because it was the one where every other team in it did crash out. But anyway, now, uh, <laughs> congratulations nonetheless. I give them an awful hard time. Now, look, thanks to our sponsors as well, CMQ, Kettle Racing, ESE, of course, and uh, some tight pedals. And of course, Motorsport Ireland, who uh, work in conjunction with us for those licenses. And uh, Mondello Park, they're all very good to us, and we are very good to them. Uh, and it's a lovely relationship with the uh, Kildare Venue, superb racing venue, they're very chance to have to up there. Now, Lawrence, what we were looking at back there, we're looking at Rob Moore now. De Dennis, so just Moore. Dennis Han I was just watching the the, uh, the 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 times there. Dennis Hanley just did his pit stop. I yes. do believe that Robert. I'm not 100 percent sure if Robert has pitted. And <laughs> sorry, Lawrence. And there, there we have Luca, who was uh, looking so promising as well. Uh, he's only three and a half seconds behind. Uh, but he's being chased down hard by uh, uh, Lenkowicz there. Yeah, I, I think Rob hasn't pitted yet. I think Rob's due a pit stop. I think what we were looking at, that battle going down the back straight into the bus stop, was the battle for potentially the provision of the P1 in this race with Luca Thingard and Lukas Lenkiewicz. Uh, Lenkiewicz, I, 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 I'm open to correction for anyone uh, of the, uh, who is who's of that region. To correct me, I'm more than happy. Um, I didn't know how to pronounce Crossfab for the longest time, so my vote of pronunciation certainly isn't of the highest standard. Uh, but look, a few really, really interesting battles. So we're going to keep on board with Rob Moore here because we do want to see if he does dive into the pits. As I said, about 45 minutes, 46 and a half, pushing it down to the three car. Uh, Rob Moore, obviously, you can see that two on his interview, which says that he's been two fast passing the start finish line. Uh, he's obviously now P1. It'll be interesting to see uh, whether he does indeed go into the pit. And Rob going into that bus stop. A couple of other uh, battles we'll just keep an eye on. We've got Lingard and Lucas Lindfitz swapping places again behind him. Rob's going to go for another battle. Now, is Rob going to. 
to, is he gonna is he gonna risk it for a chocolate biscuit and take it for the distance because there's a four point four point one second gap Rob might be able to stick it in a higher map which means the car will be down slightly on power but he must be using less fuel. And he sees the two of these guys battling behind him and potentially Rob thinks I can hold out here and might be on for a race win. I do believe they have a mandatory pit. I, I'm open for correction. We've got some drivers in the chat so you guys can uh, correct us as we have an epic battle here for P2 in the GT class uh, as Tingar gets overtaken by uh, Lenkiewicz. Len Lenkiewicz. I, I, I need to get that pronunciation as well. I'm, I'm doubting myself now. Uh, <laughs> but uh, side by side through here, this is an incredibly technical section. They're giving away a lot of time to the road if they're going to keep this up. Yeah, Lenk Lenkiewicz. I'm going to stick with Lenkiewicz. Lenkiewicz. I'm pretty sure that WICZ is a bit at the end as we see an LP2 going down the inside uh, in one of those uh, epic um, lol face deliveries. These guys are side by side for the last couple of minutes. We're looking at Johnny McCarthy now with Sergei Graben and the trees have unfortunately blocked our view. That is uh, my favourite view, the chopper cam, but sometimes it does get uh, slightly uh, obscured uh, by the trees, of course, in the Ardennes Forest here in Belgium. Stayed dry tonight as well. Uh, no severe fog. It's almost perfect weather. This is like Spa 24 hours uh, weather. Uh, not so much this year, but most years <laughs> where the sun is shining and, uh, and we're starting to see the sun here. Uh, Johnny has Sergei Graben coming around the outside. I think he's going to hold on to that though. And Sergei has been Lockery diving up the inside. Sergei now has the inside for the second round. Uh, from the outside, it's too wide now, but from the source, there is a, an LMP2 car behind them as well. There we go. Um, and Sergei and Ben Lockery go side by side. Ben's going to go late in the brakes. We're all going to go late on the from Johnny McCarthy, which means he's back in it. Now Sergei seems to get the run. There's a little bit of contact there as that LMP2 goes through. And Johnny was slightly stuck in the rock, but not Johnny chasing it. And then the rock was stuck in a slightly off position. He's stuck in the field. Johnny McCarthy is stuck in the rock here as he goes right down into the end. But now we see Ben Rocky getting the run up over Rally and he's slightly stinted, however, by that LMP2. Now he's going to get in the draft of the LMP2. Sergei's going to move out to slightly three wide. Or this is incredible. 40 and three wide. Oh, a bit of a touch there between Sergei and Johnny McCarthy. Sergei's going to have that. Johnny's up in his tail. Oh, oh much. Like Kevin Rocky goes right there. Well, Sergei up Ben. And three just doesn't go into one in that corner. Ben is the man who loses out on the LMP2. Okay. A huge amount he can do. Very reminiscent of the uh, T1 incident we saw Lawrence yeah, in the Turkish Grand Prix at the weekend. Oh, that was so unfortunate. There was only the slightest of touches, but with just when he needed his front tires the most, they got unsettled. Uh, and it completely, uh, it's so difficult to communicate with the car when something like that is happening. Uh, I really feel for him there, but this battle rages on here. Yeah, Neil Ferrier, now we've seen this battle between himself and Neil, Neil, Neil involved in a good few battles. Rock, rock one of my favourite deliveries of all time with the, uh, with the uh, Homer Simpson, uh, um, the one where he's uh, an ad for this loss, this loss. So Mr. Sparkle, Mr. Sparkle, Mr. Sparkle. Mr. Sparkle. Um, but yeah, Neil Ferry now getting around the inside there of uh, Dennis and Jordan. Uh, sorry, I'm getting nice. I thought it was. It's Neil Ferry ahead of Dennis and Jr. No, it's ahead of Dennis Patrick. Uh, uh, pet, pet, pet. <laughs> <laughs> Lads, I've been sent down from race control for some of the absolute shocking pronunciations of names. <laughs> what an epic race we're having so far. Uh, I've been listening and I've been looking at the commentary here and one thing I have to set the record straight is, yes, I did win a 24-hour race right here. There you go, everybody. I did do that. Um, we <laughs> I think of Lawrence, we should have a petition to mute Niall. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Just some updates on, on the race, the penalties, because our live um, uh, updates isn't working from race control. So as I was saying, the race one uh, incident will result in a, in a post-race penalty, so the driver will be informed of that. Um, and some of the other incidents that we've seen so far uh, since, since oh, except for this one. I'm going wide, sorry, now to put across the point. Not brilliantly to get back on track and slow the car down. He's gone into pit signal. Yeah, just so they all all our incidents have been uh, their uh, racing incidents, um, including that epic three-way battle in 
uh, which we've seen. But uh, just uh, just to give that update, um, uh, as we're heading into the last um, eight minutes of this, we should expect to see some last uh, last minute splash and dash from some of the just, drivers. But they're looking for one clarification just in the chat. There, did you win a twenty four hour race here? Yeah, yeah, I did. That's amazing. Absolutely. That's incredible. On, on a serious note, on a serious note, a serious point of clarification. Direction. Uh, the chat. We were talking here about the. You were saying earlier about Does that mean that they don't have that mandatory pit stop? Or do all cars in the street have a mandatory pit stop? But we're wondering, does Rob Moore is he old pit stop? It's it's not so. Um, from race control's point of view, it's not mandatory. Oh. The cars can get to the yeah, so you don't have to, but um, we'll wait for clarification on that. You do need to re um, finish the race under your own steam, under your own power, right? So, and what we are expecting all cars to do is, is make it back to uh, Park Fermi. Perfect. Uh, so that means next lap, of course, on top of, mm -hmm. uh, top of the lines. And, and we did on. see that quite tragically at the Adex Sim Racing uh, Expo on the GT500, where I think it was the second place car, Lawrence didn't yeah, actually no. make like with pit stop uh, yeah, pit they, box, um, they were about 10 meters shy at the end and that was yeah. heartbreaking for them because they were there with a real chance of get, taking home some prize money yeah um, uh, so it'll be interesting as as this goes on uh, we've, we're focusing on those GT cars Luca Tingard and uh, uh, Linkovic are battling so hard that Robert Moore despite potentially being on older tyres is actually extending that gap at the front. He's extended about two seconds onto it right now. So with seven minutes, six minutes to go in this race, uh, Robert Moore is looking like an outside favourite to actually win this thing. Very interesting and surprised these two haven't been working together. I'm not entirely sure what happened because Lucas held a fairly, not I wouldn't say a very substantial lead, but certainly a reasonable lead uh, when he went into the pits. I didn't see any discernible reason that he major off tracks for instance that we've seen him drop back so this is that is very interesting. Uh, Comedy Dave comes from uh, Chris Peterson and says hi Rachel how much fun would you like to have? Drivers, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I have I've just gotten a message from uh, race control there you can probably see it as well. Pit stop is mandatory so uh, I wonder if Robert has pitted or if he's yet to pit I really don't know but look at this battle they are side by side every corner we're not giving them the respect as commentators that we should be we're just kind of used to it at this stage look at this incredible racing oh this is so good and for two guys that were um and it just shows like you know we say when you lead race one of the great things about league racing and it really wouldn't get anybody uh who's in some racing to get involved with these and it's a great way to, to make friends and a great way to kind of extend that social aspect but one of the great things about league racing on is that you get to know who you're racing against. You get to know, is this guy safe? What does this guy do? What's his driving style? You know, and you can start to capitalize on that and it makes the racing so much more interesting. For these two guys to be thrown into the first round of this and still be able to ride side by side, confident that both of them can keep the space and drive the way they do. I'm supposed to show you the standard that's here at the IDMC. And it is really, really impressive to see um, the standard generally Timo Hayden is making mince meat of the rest of the competition. I hope this, uh, not that I have any anti-German bias, but I certainly hope this isn't the case for the rest of the season because uh, we, uh, we've seen some epic battles at the top of the leaderboard, so it would be great to see Oscar, Josh and Alex and some of the rest of them uh, up the top there with 11 and a half seconds. How often can you say Oscar Mangan is 11 and a half seconds behind uh, another car? Now, I don't know whether uh, the LMP is an Oscar's favourite, um, are these guys struggling a little bit trying to uh, trying to get used to these cars? But absolutely, I think four minutes to go. Um, I am. I think the the LMP1 is, is slightly sucked for 11 second gap. Uh, maybe second and third Oscar Mangan and Josh Maynard if Josh can uh, get himself back together um, and get back in there. But this battle in GT3 is where it is happening, folks. Do not go anywhere for the next four and a half, five, six minutes. Through it, even after as well, so they might park for me. So that's exactly it. Well, I've... just a quick update because I've been um, told I didn't answer that question correctly. Um, what I heard was, uh, is it a mandatory pit stop? To make that very, very clear, what I answered was the cars are fueled, they can go to the end if they manage it properly. The, 
the iRacing game will not enforce the pit stop. So to answer it correctly, if the drivers do have to stop, but uh, if they won't be reminded to, this is the point I was trying to make. So they can go to the end, they could drive the whole race, there's nothing within the, in the game that's going to make them have to pit. So it's not a forced pit, but it is mandatory. So as we're looking at it right now, there are some drivers who have not pitted, is my understanding. So yeah, there will be penalties imposed if you do not take a pit stop. Now, um, that apparently, however, uh, chaps, does not apply to Rob Moore because word from race control or word from our uh, from Ron Hederman here, uh, Ron just messaged me saying, looks like Rob did an early pit stop strategy. Uh, he stopped lap seven. So I would that Rob has a seven point seven second advantage and going over the rest of the field. We even talked about Rob going to pit at some stage. Looks like he's going to go on and win this. I I was. Just thinking, I, looking at his livery there, as you were saying that, I remember it, it was actually the first car that we saw pit very, very early. I thought he might have been carrying damage. Uh, maybe that was all part of the strategy. And are we going to see more early pit stops as a result of this in the future races? Certainly. Well, Rob certainly set the bar. You can see it there on your screen. Lap 7, L7. Lap 7, Lukas Lenkiewicz in lap 13, and Luke Tingard in lap 11. Um, then Dennis Hanley Jr., Vladimir Ponomarenko, uh, 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 Linus Petkovic, uh, 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 and uh, Ian Malone, and Ed Finza, and Nick Perry, Colin Sergey Gravin, Dan Carmen, and Shane Connolly uh, in the LMP2 class. We get towards the final laps here. Tim Wade, Nasca Magnin, Josh Malin, top three. Brian McManus, Valentinus Machikovas, Harold Wilson, Kalkos, John McCone, Zach Barry, Samantis, Adam Dowling, and P. Nine. Now we look at Shane Connolly battling with Johnny McCarthy. Uh, Johnny going down the inside in that Red Bull livery, and oh, that's not what you want to see. Here. <laughs> uh, and it's and coming back in, but uh, but yeah, a good battle here. Um, sorry, uh, uh, Ian, Ian. Ian Malone is on a, an absolutely brilliant drive. He's uh, gone up a couple of positions there. Uh, so he's doing really well and we have a lot of love I have to give a shout out before we end this race in about a minute's time have to get a sh give a shout out to all the support that's in for especially Peter McCann in VRA Racing uh, Peter apparently is carrying damage he's in P9 he just went up into P9 there uh, and uh, he's apparently carrying damage he's on uh, an absolutely roaring drive uh, he's got Adam Dowling ahead of him who's also VRA uh, and of course we've got Brian McManus up in, all the way in P4 uh, what so a drive to Brian sorry for the car just looking at that that's an yeah, yeah. He, yeah it, it is great to see Brian back up there and of course um, Peter as well big shout out uh, uh, Adam Dowling I'm just looking at this Lawrence this whole stream has just exploded we're going to have to get you back onto this <laughs> 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 You're going to have to talk to my wife and get the permission. <laughs> at least you will be reminded every two seconds. Well, <laughs> race that you won back in, uh, back in what, 1943, is it now? Yeah, yeah. I'm just looking here. Big shout out to uh, this uh, comment. Dog on couch was saying, on the ed edge of seat the last five minutes. I'm the same. I, I, I just can't, I can't believe it. Just keeps getting better and better and better. Every season we keep saying it. As long as the drivers keep turning up and putting in this quality of racing, we're just going to keep going bigger and bigger and bigger and we've got some exciting news at the end of this stream so uh, stay tuned for that and i think that's uh, that exciting news is going to be as much new for anybody else i have absolutely no idea what's coming on the road <laughs> when it comes to this uh timo uh, still in first place as we cross the hour mark however let's remember uh, it is when the first class car uh, passes the line, that is when the um, P1 on track of all classes passes the line uh, after the hour mark, that is when all the cars are So, uh, if you are, you are just, if you are just ahead of the LMP1, you have a whole other lap left to go. Now, has Timo won this? I don't think so. He's flashing his lights. He's certainly not driving. Oh, that was a late move Whoa. there. Curtains on the final lap for Timo Hayden, flashing his lights. I think the GT3 got slightly startled, trying to keep the inside line. Timo went down the outside, but here is your winner of the LMP2 class on round one of the IDMC autumn season. He's coming all the way from Germany. He's taking the short drive from Germany to Belgium, and he's put in a superb drive in an LMP2. Timo Hayden from Impulse Racing takes 
the first position and all championship, all first place championship points, followed by Oscar Mangan in P2, who's gotten the better of Josh Malin. Josh falling away there in those last few laps, unfortunately. Josh Malin in P3, 11.8 second difference between Timo Hayden and Oscar Mangan. What an unbelievable race by Timo. He is a man to look in the future. Great to have extra nationality, extra people involved in this series putting it up to the Irish lads. Brian McManus coming around in fourth. Uh, then we expect to see Valentinus Marchinkovas come down the road about 10 seconds after that. Harris Yataudis and Tony Stack. We also have to keep an eye on Rob Moore where he is coming back because uh, next time he cover crosses the line, he'll be taking the check flag for class victory in the pro. And, and we, can, um, we can see that he's actually struggling with his tyres because that gap to, Ling, uh, to Tingard is actually uh, getting a lot smaller now. There's no way he's going to catch him. Robert is definitely managing his tyres. Uh, but he's done such an incredible job. A superb job by, uh, there's Harold as you is passing. GT3, that GT3 cars passing the line as well. We're still waiting for Rob Moore, but what a superb drive uh, from him. Uh, we're on board with Tony Stack, who seems to have an issue in that Alpine uh, livery car. He seems to pick up damage later on. He's kind of coming around the race, and I saw it makes me a little bit uncomfortable as Adam Dowling. Uh, juts in the head of a GT3 car to pass the line uh, in seventh position. We're still waiting for uh, Rob Moore. Uh, hopefully, we can get cameras on him soon uh, to see where he is around track. Ah, he's only just starting. Is he past the line already, Rob Moore? I think. Yes, he has. He has. Rob yeah. Moore passes the line. Finishing line for Rob Moore. Brilliant, brilliant strategy by Rob Moore. We talked about Tuno uh, going out and just blasting around. Rob uh, pitting in lap seven and trusting that his drive to get him all the way to the end. And when all the said and done and all the uh, shifting and moving is done in the pits, uh, Rob finishes P1. So, uh, a, a bit of perspective there for the top four in GT finished closer together than the top two in the LMP. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. Brilliant. Love that. That That is why we have you. Know, well, uh, that and <laughs> as you bring to our chat but also <laughs> brilliant stats uh, that is really interesting um, and, and you know the GT3s are always very competitive and Luke's just pulling over here what we've heard from Niall is that we need to get back into Park Ferme yes so Lucas better put his foot down and get back around if um, anybody on the stream knows Lucas shout at him right now there we go oh, there we go he's got back go. again um <laughs> oh, my heart was going out there for a second. I thought uh, Lucas fall fell. Oh my god, that would be that would be a terrible way to lose P3 after such an epic debut drive. Is that Peter McCann style? Was it Peter went and did donuts before when he won when he thought he had won a race? That, but he was Brian, Brian McManus. <laughs> Brian McManus. My apologies. Brian McManus. Hashtag <laughs> never forget. He's going to join the, the IDMC <laughs> Hall of Last Lap Hall of Fame there, I think. Um, the interesting thing is, car number is 15, to remind him that it was 15 laps in the race. <laughs> we we have Chris McCann on the chat as well saying that P3, P4, P7 and P8, four cars in the top 10 for VRA Racing. And the support on stream, uh, if I was to say who has the most support as a team, VRA racing is absolutely dominating, uh, so uh, that's that's incredible to see. It's great to see this level of team support uh, rising up in sim racing yeah, and course, digital motorsports. Yeah. And they've had a great season with VRA, of course, winning the uh, as well. Uh, uh, no, 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 sorry, <laughs> um, not a, not not the not not a twenty-four hour that that big endurance race they did in the Nuremberg Ring, not bad. <laughs> um, yeah, no, um, a brilliant season for them, and look, they're just hilarious guys. Um, I, if you ever, I mean, I like to think that our stream is professional and it's, and it's entertaining, it's a bit of crack, but oh my god, you would watch one of those VRA streams and you would be on the floor in tears of laughter. Some of those guys are the sharpest, they are sharpest axes. Um, you know, uh, you were saying, Kevin, about the last lap, you need your concentration. We saw Timo almost get uh, caught up with a GT car on his final lap. Unfortunately, Tony Stack seems to have gotten involved in an incident uh, and he actually dropped yeah. two or three places on the very last lap. Uh, so you have to feel for him um, after such a great drive. It's, it's great to see him in the top 10. Here we see yeah, the instant. Great uh, to see him. This seems through Kuan. Did he lose the back end? No, that's oh, oh, that's very unfortunate. That looked like it was Candelis. Oh. Candelis involved in a GT car 
came back out across track and Tony just arrived late in the scene and what can you say? Oh, 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 oh no, 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 no. no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, 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 God. This is a laughy cry. That's, That's horrible. horrible. That's very disappointing. Oh. Um, look, moving away and moving on to uh, a man who's had a much better day uh, in an LMP one car. Um, it's time to say uh, Guten Abend, and it uh, has been a Guten Abend for our newest uh, uh, Timo Hayden. Uh, Timo, look, uh, Oscar Mangan, you may know, came in to uh, this series as reigning champion and reigning champion quite some distance now 11.8 seconds difference there are people watching the stream with their jaws on the floor tell us a little bit about that uh, uh, sorry on, on what <laughs> i said there's people looking at the gap between yourself and the race yes. champion of the season and they're looking at it with jaws on the floor because i don't think any of them expected the gap to be so big <laughs> thanks um yeah i i was um I, I thought it will be a very, very close race. Um, but in the end, I was very lucky through the traffic. Uh, and in the traffic, especially here with, with the two classes um, and, and the driver's experience, um, you can make a lot of gap between you and, and, the, comp uh, and the other drivers. Um, so yeah, and the rest of, of the race, I was very consistent with my pace, which helped me a lot. To, to and, get this cap, yeah, and it is it's it, that that LMP car because of course it's uh, you know it's um, the tires wouldn't last as long certainly with the new tire model seen previously. Um, there is of course that stop in the middle. So um, how does that add an extra bit of bit of strategy to things, and and how do you try and pick your moment in on, on when to pick? No, the tires aren't a problem here. To be honest, um, normally. The LMP2 car fits very good to, to long stints of one tire set, uh, especially on Spa, um, similar to, to Le Mans. Um, I was, um, I, I didn't know how the setup will perform um, during one hour uh, because it was the really first time to drive multiple laps on the setup. And it's a really special one uh, compared to what you normally drive on this track. Um, but yeah, I got it, and uh, the feeling was really good on the car through the whole race. We have somebody and, on the stream asking, what's your secret to consistency, Timo? Practice, practice, practice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I drive this car a lot, um, to be honest. Um, it, it's my car. It's my favorite car on the system. Uh, I drive it 100% uh, when I'm driving iRacing mainly. Um, so it's just practice, practice, practice. And um, I feel very, very well with this car. Um, that helps a lot. Um, and I suppose, look, Timo, you, as you say, practice, practice, because you're, you're on the road often, the Impulse Racing team. Um, you're involved in a good few. Um, I suppose, first of all, how did you end up getting involved in, in this one? And, and how does the standard of this league kind of rate to, to some of the other ones you've been involved in? The question, sorry, because the internet was bad. The question was how I got involved into the series, or how you got involved in the series, and I suppose how the standard of the series ranks some of the other uh, series you've been involved in. Yeah, and, and teammate um, tagged me in into our Discord server um, at the at the beginning of the week. Um, I didn't realize that this league exists, um, and yeah, I I thought about yeah, okay, uh, just signing up. Um, that went very well. Um, so <laughs> I am here. Um, the center of the league is quite difficult to other leagues I compete in um, because normally I compete in the EFRA Endurance or in the Sportscar Open League, which is on very, very high level, which is here as well. But because of this special um, with the GT3 class um, and, and the I rating specs there, um, it's really special and makes a lot of fun. Brilliant. Look, Timo, uh, congratulations. Look forward to seeing you next time. Uh, a perfect start to you in the series. One of the newest names to the IDMC. Hopefully, we'll be seeing you for the next number of years. Uh, congratulations on your first win. And hopefully, uh, you things might be a little bit more competitive next week. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thanks for broadcasting as well.
Brilliant. Look, uh, thanks a minute to Timo. Uh, Lawrence, have a word. Oscar. Yeah. Oscar, welcome. Well, cheers. Thanks. Thanks a million, guys. That was, uh, that was a sweaty drive. Uh, you and Josh were tussling. Um, Timo was kind of out in the distance. Um, at one stage, uh, I, uh, I kind of didn't know which way it was going to go. Uh, towards the end, uh, you did a great job in finishing um, with, a, with a convincing lead over Josh. Uh, tell us how your race went. Yeah, um, I guess uh, pole position is not the best place to start at, uh, at this track, I guess with this car and how strong the toe is. Um, I really, I, I knew it was strong, but I wasn't expecting it to be as, as powerful as it was. So sort of by the time we got to the top of Radion, I was like, I might be third or fourth by the time we get to Lake Home. So um, like once I kind of held second then, or third actually, Alex got ahead. Um, it was just sort of like, let's try and just kind of stick in a pack and see, can we just kind of either fuel save to kind of reduce the pit stop time or, or something. But um, so the Emo's pace was really, really good. And then the traffic sort of seemed to go his way a bit more at the, at the opening of the stint. So um, once yeah. he kind of had a, a four or five second lead, then it was sort of about kind of getting to see, can we just get P2? Um, we, we've got all, we've got loads of people. Doug on couch, Chris Peterson, Naxalar, uh, shouting out to you, saying uh, excellent drive. They would, of course, know you from last season. Uh, this is a strong start to the season. It's probably not the exact result you wanted. Uh, but you can't be uh, you can't be too disappointed with it. How do you think the uh, GT cars did today, and how was the negotiation of traffic? Yeah, I think um, for the most part it was pretty good. Um, I've done a couple of LMP2 slash GT3 races, like with like like sports car races. So um, I guess I had a bit of experience in sort of we're like kind of expecting how the GT3 should react. There was a few that were a bit on a bit uh, a bit kind of unexpecting in kind of how they were moving but um no still it was pretty clean i didn't really have any issues for the most part and um it was just sort of kind of the look of the draw where you would catch them if you caught them on a straight it was easy and then if you had to especially then towards the end i think um josh and i came across a few battles for like the podium in, in that class so um kind of just trying to squeak by without kind of ruining their race it was kind yeah, of crucial we saw you at times especially when you were battling with alex uh, we saw you really, uh, I guess, flexing your discipline, uh, sometimes to, the, to your detriment because you were maybe losing a bit of time, uh, but you were really kind of picking your points at which you were making moves. Uh, and in the end, um, it seems like that really showed uh, or that really paid off. Um, Alex gave you a great battle. I'm not sure if you're actually aware uh, what happened to him during the race. Yeah, um, it was Josh had kind of caught up to us because the traffic had, we became across a huge gaggle and then Josh kind of got into our slipstream and then got ahead of Alex and passed me then up uh, the Camel Strait and then we came across a, I can't remember, like a GT3, I think it was pink pig one or something and um, I, Alex, or Josh got by him and then I got by him but just uh, sort of, I think, a no-name corner before Puon, um they came together. I'm not really sure entirely what happened but uh, I just saw it in my mirror and then Alex was in the wall and I never saw him again. I thought he might be able to limp back to the pits and get a repair but um, I guess it kind of killed the car for him. It's a tough one. I think he actually had a subsequent incident after that, uh, maybe during rejoin or uh, other traffic. I'm not 100% sure, uh, but that was really unfortunate uh, for him. Um, there are people on the chat saying your, your bump drafting was hilarious. Uh, <laughs> can, you, uh, can you talk about that? Yeah, I didn't even... Well, I kind of... Once Alex actually bumped me and then pushed me up the straight i kind of remembered that you can do it in these cars i completely forgot that that was the thing i thought he was gonna just gonna go by me and the next thing a huge whack and the rpm went skyrocketing but um yeah i guess it's sort of a, a characteristic of this car we tried doing that for a while just to see could um we keep up or just kind of get back within the the uh, slipstream window for timo but it just didn't work out in the end but yeah no it's i think it's really only this track and maybe one or two others where you can do it um we have just to go a very long straight. I was kind of not really wanting to do it on the way on the way from uh, Blanchimont to the uh, bus stop in case something went wrong yeah. with with an overlap or something. But um, yeah, no, it's it's a good car to race. The it's... slipstream is extremely powerful, so it's it can end up as almost like plate racing in NASCAR if you if you want it to be. Yeah, it's it's risky there. We actually just saw on stream. We just saw your move uh, at bus stop. 
where you took the position from Josh. Uh, we're not 100% sure. You can probably confirm to us. Uh, did Josh get himself in a little bit of trouble there? And did you capitalize? Um, yeah, he just seemed to kind of run wide a bit um, on the first part of the chicane. And then he had a, a slow exit. So I kind of just got it done. I was... I wasn't really sure if he was kind of trying to let me by because he wanted to just go straight back me by me back again on the straight or not. But um, I just said if I can get him here, and then if the, there, I saw traffic up ahead, and I was like, if this kind of works out, I might be able to pull a gap. So um, that was kind of the goal of that move. I wasn't really trying to fight too hard in case you know something went wrong for Timo, and we'd be able to capitalize on that. But yeah. Well, you've given us an absolutely incredible battle uh, and great entertainment yet again. Uh, one final question for you. Um, we know that some cars really suit you, some cars don't. How are you feeling with this LMP car? Yeah, it's not a it's not a car that I race very frequently. I think the last time I raced this was in the, the EDMC thing, um, the Nations Cup back in March or April. Um, so it's not really a car I'm fairly familiar with. I guess it's sort of like a hybrid between GT and open wheels. So um, it's definitely very, very unique with the kind of like no ABS, but it has traction control. So... Um, it has this kind of weird on power dynamic in how it kind of applies power and how much you can push. And then it's the same on the brakes and how it kind of the <laughs> car have, rotates on the, we, on the different corner phases. We, we have another question on the stream. Now that you've sized up the car, can we expect a P1 from you next round? Um, I guess, I guess, <laughs> if, I guess if, uh, if we have the pace, I think the, the next track is Monza. So um, the draft will be even more amplified there. It'll be, be really just kind of almost like NASCAR, I'd presume, with the traffic involved as well. So, uh, yeah, it should be a good one. Should be a great one. Listen, you've given incredible entertainment. Uh, if you were to look at the chat and search for your name, it's been mentioned many times. I advise going back and looking at the, uh, the live stream because uh, you've, really, you've really given us what we wanted tonight. Thank you so much. We can't wait for the next round. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Are you there, Kevin? Yeah, I'm there with you, Lawrence. Uh, I'm much needed drink of water uh, um, and it's time to say welcome in to our one of our newest drivers uh, Luca Tingard thank you so much for joining us in the uh, in um, Luca um, I have to say it was one of those races where what the what the pit situation was you seem to come into pit P1 as far as we can see when you pitted but Rob Moore had pitted at lap 7 and then it was a really battle between yourself and Lucas right all the way through the race. Yeah, it was a really great race towards the end there with uh, Lucas. We had a really close battle. It was uh, really cool. And I suppose, yeah, uh, yeah what's, what, was your, what were your impressions of the race? Hoping you might be able to get ahead of him at some point or, or were you like, we were wondering, were you guys going to work together at some point to try and catch up Rob, but you seemed to be battling against each other, kind of settling for that P2. Yeah, Robert just had more pace than both of us, um, and I, I realized that from the start. Uh, so I just tried to hold Robert back as much as I could before he pitted. Uh, I was surprised that he pitted so early, but I guess he tried to undercut us, uh, which sort of worked. Um, but yeah, he just had more pace, so I just settled for second place and see how good I could, uh, I could make it from there. Yeah, and was that, is that undercut tactic something that you'd have to think of in the future because we were so shocked that he had pitted so early. We were expecting maybe an undercut around 25 minutes in to 30 minutes in, but he did it lap seven. So is that something now that, that the rest of you guys are going to be kind of keeping an eye on for the rest of the series? Yeah, definitely. Uh, especially with the uh, LMP2 traffic, you can sort of avoid uh, most of it if you pit right when they uh, catch up to you. That way you can uh, save a lot of time in traffic. Mm, and, and I suppose same, same petrol. Sorry, Lawrence, you come in there. How, how did you find the traffic? How did you find negotiating the traffic? We saw at times, uh, you know, your battle with Lucas was absolutely incredible, but you had to deal with a lot of traffic. Uh, I thought the traffic was actually uh, really good, better than expected. Uh, I had one incident um, near the start of the race, uh, but that's about it. Otherwise, the traffic was really nice. Few sketchy overtakes or passes, but <laughs> it wasn't anything uh, crazy and no contact. So uh, I'd say it was pretty good. You're getting great support on the stream here. Uh, I'm not sure how familiar you are with uh, 
uh, with what the streams are like. We've got a great energy here tonight and people are really supporting uh, what you did. At one stage, Kevin and I uh, were just talking about other things while you and Lucas were side by side, corner after corner. Um, you gave each other tremendous respect in ways and in other ways you just didn't give each other an inch. Um, talk us through your battle with Lucas. Well, it was very close, first of all. Um, he He's really nice to race with, actually. Um, he leaves just enough space uh, so it's possible to get around the corner, uh, both of us. It's very respectful. I, uh, I really enjoyed the, the battle with him. We have a question um, Question on the stream. What was it like? What were you thinking in the heat of the battle with Lucas when there were LMP cars coming up behind you? Because given what they said in driver's briefing, that you can't make life difficult for those LMP cars uh, and you have to let them by, how did that affect your racing? Um, I tried to let the LMP cars pass as easily as possible. Uh, but sometimes it just wasn't possible because we were side by side. Um, so yeah, that's a that was a bit unfortunate for the LMP drivers, but I mean, what can you do? You had every uh, right to do it because the the battle for P two uh, was probably, if I was to pick an outstanding battle, and we we had a lot of them. We didn't know where to look at times, uh, but I'd say your battle was just the the most spectacular to watch. It was corner after corner. It was relentless, and you were just swapping positions all the time. Yeah, it was really exciting. Um, I actually had damage on the front end from hitting the wall in T1. So, uh, yeah, I had a little bit of a, a slower top speed. But, I don't know, for some reason, Lucas just kept breaking earlier than I did every time we entered a corner. Or I just breaked a little bit later. So, uh, yeah. Excellent. Well, you've given us incredible entertainment. Um, are you going to change anything for next week? Probably the, the strategy. The... Yeah? That's the, uh, that's the only thing. Okay, don't... Say. Don't give away too many of your secrets. Uh, you, you've been absolutely incredible, uh, and we're delighted to have you. Well, uh, thank you for having me. It's really exciting to be uh, in the season. Cheers. Brilliant. Uh, Luca, thank you so much. Um, now, the last man we're going to have uh, before we finish out. Um, now, Tosh Malin, you are a gentleman, right? It's not the first time I've said this. And I know that you are so much of a gentleman that you will be so kind not to remind everybody about the Instagram message that I sent you today looking for an interview that was sent to the wrong person. But I did say <laughs> that, I was, <laughs> that I was hoping to speak to you later on and another podium um, means that I can do that. Um, tell us a little bit about the race and maybe not so much about the embarrassing Instagram message I sent. <laughs> I, it's, it's all right. Don't worry about it. Um... <laughs> Yeah, it's it was it was an interesting race. I mean, qualifying did not go my way. Um, I didn't really get a very good sort of lap together. Um, then I off tracked the um, my my third and final lap of the of the session. So it didn't really do me any favors starting from sixth. But at the same time, you've got a lot uh, like sort of a, you've got quite a big toe around here. Um, due to the high downforce setup and following an LMP2 car, it's it's really going to cut sort of quite a sizable hole in the air. So the the toe was quite pivotal, especially in the opening couple of laps. And I just I just kept my nose clean and didn't get myself involved in 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 too much hassle. Um, but as the race sort of progressed, we just hit traffic after traffic after traffic in the wrong places. Um, and I mean, Oscar thought he had it bad compared to Timo. Um, congrats to to both of those those guys, by the way. It did really well. Um, but yeah, I just got completely screwed um, by the traffic today. But I suppose, look, Josh, it's one of those things that we say: traffic giveth, traffic taketh away, and that might not necessarily apply in this race, but. You would hope over the course of a season that it will even itself out. And, you know, you know as well as anybody else, um, you know, and we'll talk about this weekend as well uh, in your real life exploits. But you know as well as anybody else that consistent results in this championship bring rewards come the end of the, come the, end of the year. A hundred percent. I mean, it, it's all well and good getting sort of wins here and there. Um, but if you're not consistently scoring sort of top five, top ten at push um then you it's not going to be sort of a way to win a championship um i mean when i took the gt5 title last year 
I didn't win every race, um, but I was I was up there. I was on sort of the podium in every race meeting um, somehow or other. So predominantly that was that was sort of top five finishes, and this is going to be the same story here. I mean, Timo, he, he's incredibly quick. I think he he dedicates i racing to the LMP2 car, um, so he he does have the upper hand on me in terms of seat time, um, and then Oscar. Again, well, we know how we all know how good Oscar is after his sort of blinding performance in the V8 in the V8 supercars last year. So, um, uh, last season, I should say. So, yeah, I'm, I'm up against some tough competition. Alex Dunn as well. Unfortunately, he he got taken out. So, it it's all to play for in the in the autumn season. Speaking of which, Josh, at one stage uh, we saw Alex and Oscar absolutely going hammer and tongs. We didn't know what was happening. We, we were commentating and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, came a VRA car. Josh Malin entered the game and you absolutely <laughs> blitzed, but you got the double slipstream. You got an incredible move. Um, talk us through that. I mean, we had uh, all but forgotten that you were in the mix and all of a sudden you, you just, you would push so hard. Uh, talk us through that. Yeah, well... Uh... They obviously they were fighting and they were slowing each other up and as sort of I, I can't remember how sort of early on in the race it was um, but as sort of the race went on I definitely saw the gap starting to decrease and I was like right okay we need to sort of get the head down and and and, and send it basically and I did get a bit lucky with traffic. Um, Here we go. This is the move on screen right now. What oh, an incredible move! It. Oh my god! It was just we. You were you were so close to Alex Dunn that yeah, we just couldn't but, even see your car. Yeah, at that at that point, I think Alex had backed off. Um, either he was fuel saving or he was um, just sort of backing off to avoid going into Oscar into the braking zone. Um, and I just took the opportunity and just well sent it. I, I didn't. It wasn't the cleanest move in terms of um, it was it was a bit messy, but. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was quite happy with that, and I, have... I don't know whether you got the got the move on myself against Oscar as he came out of the pits after the pit stop. I did him round the, I think I did him round the outside of that corner on the brakes, which was that. Yeah, this one here. <laughs> Yeah, on, the, on the button again, Ronan. Ronan, Ronan, Ronan on the ball. The real star of the show, P1 to Ronan. <laughs> this, is, this is incredible. We've got people on the, screen, uh, on the stream saying they want a screenshot of your overtake uh, and they want to set it as their background. Uh, because, <laughs> like, I don't know if you know what you're doing here, Josh, and all the other drivers as well. And as this series grows and progresses and stuff like that, the entertainment that you're giving and the other drivers uh, is simply incredible. At times, we were watching, you know, uh, races for P20, P21, uh, and down the field, and they were absolutely incredible races. What do you think of the standard this season? Uh, well, the standard's been, for, from my end at least, it's it's been really good. Um, I mean, throughout throughout the season, it's we, we've had obviously our instance. I've had an instance with Keith Dempsey and and, and other and other people um, in the series. Um, but that we've sort of put that behind us and taken each race as it comes. And you know what, the the level of um, the level of competition in this series is is far superior to to others that I've well to most that I've experienced. Um, and all Josh, it, all well, of the well <laughs> <laughs> I've I've been in Even races with like Max Verstappen, so <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was that was that was another level um but yeah joke joking aside it, it's been mega to be part of the idmc throughout and um long may it continue because it, it's really enjoyable to be a part of and the level of competition is fantastic everyone well most mostly it's all clean so we obviously racing incidents happen here and there but yeah i'm i'm I Okay. And it's it's that very attitude and that driving that's attracting new talent to IDMC. Are you surprised to see two debutants uh, on the po on on P one spot in both classes? Um, I'll be honest, not really. Um, I'm I'm not surprised at all. I mean, the, the outreach that 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 digital motorsports are looking looking at in this in this series, it it's getting in the right direction and and we're reaching the right people. 
Um, so yeah, it, it's great to see that that we've got debutants on the podium already. Um, again, long may that continue as well. Excellent. Um, Josh, look just before I leave you go. Um, uh, I'm going to bring it back to your Instagram again. I, I noticed that you're you're away on holidays recently. have done because a brilliant result at the weekend again. Um, I was watching some of your racing on YouTube and, and I suppose talk us to us a little bit about the real world stuff now and, and where's the next step for you in terms of your real world career? Wow, good question. Um, I mean, weekend just gone, I was at Donington Park racing in the Porsche Carrera Cup GB and um, for, I qualified P6. Uh, first race I finished P5 and then I got drawn out for reverse grid pole for the second race. And what followed was well chaos basically <laughs> um probably one of the well it certainly was my best drive in in the carrera cup to date um best weekend overall in terms of results as well so the the pace is there finished second held off dan camish and harry king didn't quite beat kian jewis in the um in the end but uh, credit to to everyone in in that championship again the level of competition is is unbelievable and i'm i was very very surprised i surprised myself i shot myself with with how i managed to to hold on to to them all and um yeah just defending for my life and trying to hit my marks so yeah it was, i'm i'm still on a bit of a come down from that weekend to be honest it was it was quite really quite special um but in terms of sort of real world world racing going forward it, unfortunately Motorsports are a very expensive, um, very expensive industry. So I need to have the budget in order to to progress further. So that that, that is what we're we're really sort of working on as as the as the off season approaches. So I'm I'm hoping that we can can get into the Carrera Cup next year, but we'll have to have to wait and see. Yeah, we certainly hope that certainly your talent uh, that'll over the line um joshua thanks so much again for joining us with your time always very much appreciated looking forward to actually interviewing you properly um and and staying to my word on that message i said to you earlier but uh look, really, really, <laughs> yeah of course <laughs> really appreciate it um very best of luck uh, in two weeks time looking forward to speaking to you again then no worries cheers guys thank you brilliant right, look, then. as if there isn't enough before we jump in here you go we have the Spa 24 hour winner himself. Nile Nile Mar. Nile Mar. I almost said Nile there for a second. Jeez, I'm getting my nads confused. <laughs> wouldn't, be, um, wouldn't be the worst. Um, just bringing, bringing back the, uh, so the updates from the race control because our overlays are working and that's why I'm jumping in and out. Um, so we have incidents being sent in. For anyone who's new to IDMC, the drivers now have a, a, an opportunity to send in incident reports and they're coming in quicker than many. So It'll be a long, busy night for Rob and myself. But um, yeah, I did mention an announcement, guys, right? And something that's going to be of keen interest to everyone. As we've known, every IDMC season that we put on, it just keeps getting bigger. And this race, to me, has proved once again that the community is growing. Lawrence joined us tonight. The whole thing is blown up online. So thanks to everybody who's really come along because it lifts my spirits. I'm actually in Warsaw at the moment, um, doing race control and trying my best at, at, at a, a commentary. And there's a reason that I am over here. As many of you will be aware, we were at ADAC and as well, Lawrence was over there and, and seen firsthand how big this sport is becoming and just how incredible the technology and um, just everything is just exponentially blown my mind. I'm sure you're the same, Lawrence, with just how the, the, the amount of new equipment and steering wheels and screens and PCs and everything is all just coming together. Um, it's incredible, yeah. It really is exciting. And Lawrence and myself have had many, many long conversations over the year about building a dream where we want a professional discipline of motorsport. That is, of course, for digital that's how we came up with the name um and as i'm looking at the racing tonight i was just going down through this guys very quickly right so we've had within idmc which is an irish digital motorsports championship we've had representatives obviously from ireland uk 
Poland, Sweden, Denmark, Finland, Germany. We've had Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, even as far as United Arab Emirates, United Arab Emirates Saudi Arabia, Singapore, USA, Canada, Mexico, Netherlands. We have Neil, who always joins us from Scotland as well. We've Lithuanians, a uh, lot of uh, Northern Ireland drivers with us. And then with the Nordics, uh, you know, Iceland, Norway, Finland. It goes on and on and on. So the natural progression was to hold the European Digital Motorsports Cups, which we did earlier this year. And that was a huge success. But I'm actually over here now because, as people are aware, uh, we've been backed in, uh, uh, by the ESE group, which is a, a global esports community. I'm very proud to announce we finally got the green light to go ahead and do the World Digital Motorsports Cup, which I've been busting my ass to do for the last God knows how many years. So we're going to bring everyone on that journey. Of course, we'll bring Jack, we'll bring Kevin, we'll bring Lawrence, we'll bring the whole community. We're going to blow it up huge. This IDMC finishes up on the 22nd of November. On the 28th of November, we'll be doing a live stream that is just going to completely blow everything out of the charts. We've got production company, we've got stage, we've got lighting, we're going to have hosts, we're going to have analysts, we're going to have live race stewards. Uh, it's going to be unbelievable, guys. So I am basically working night and day to pull this whole thing together but i'm so proud of what digital motorsports the community all of our partners everybody that's come along and put in the time and effort week on week to finally say we're there we're going to do this it's going to happen this year and everybody gets to come along and be a part of it it's incredible like it's it's such amazing news like this is a, a world stage for digital motorsports in a really uh, organized way it's it's i know it's been a dream of yours for uh, quite a while nile uh, and and now with ese entertainment on board um uh, this is uh, it's exciting stuff yeah and we want you there lawrence you know you, the, it's an open invitation of course kevin has already been privileged to some of the conversations we've got kevin and, and jack will be back with us next week i'm sure he's listening in tonight for monza that will be great relief to everyone who's listening to the stream that you won't have to listen to me banging on about winning uh, <laughs> <laughs> split one at, at, at a spa. But no, I am. I'm incredibly proud. And I think, you know, for the amount of work we put in over the last five years, certainly over the last three, to finally get to this opportunity. And believe me, I'll, I'll work night and day to make it happen. Um, but what we will be saying is, the winner of this IDMC championship uh, from Ireland will, of course, be going forward to that final in Warsaw. Wow. Live on stage. So you heard it here first. We've always said it, that this championship would build towards represent your country. Um, so everyone's ears are lighting up. It's an invitational-only event. So it is people who are associated with digital motorsports. We have representatives from all over the world. Um, the ink hasn't even dried on the contracts today, guys. So <laughs> I'm going out to see the venue tomorrow um, and watch Digital Motorsports socials for some of the pictures that I'm going to be putting up because it's just going to be absolutely out of this world, top tier stuff. And it's, it's crazy how, how it's all coming together. So th thank you very much. I'll let our two commentators get back to what they do best, summarizing this race. <laughs> leading us into Monza for the next race. And Kevin, if you will, I always love the way you sign off these streams. So for <laughs> me, super proud of it, guys. As long as the drivers keep showing up and putting in this level of racing, I'll still, I'll just work, work my ass off to make sure that the stream, the broadcast, the promotion, the sponsors, the prizes, the whole package that we put together week in, week out is there. And it just keeps building as well. So there you go. Uh, pack a passport. We're off to Poland in a few <laughs> couple of weeks. And uh, that's the first time I'd even heard what city. We so delighted to know Warsaw is the venue. Um, it's going to be a really exciting one, guys. Do watch this space. But of course, uh, plenty of racing before that. Lawrence, just before I suppose we sign out, um, final thoughts on, on today's race. And I suppose what we can, what can we look forward to now for the rest of the season? Well, I, I'll just start off by saying, Kevin, this is actually the first time we've ever spoken. 
uh, not even like we haven't even spoken through uh, written messages in a Discord or anything like that. But I feel like I know you from these streams, and I think <laughs> you you kind of feel like you know me. So I wasn't really uh, that nervous coming into this. Uh, so thanks for making my life quite easy. Uh, what can we expect from Monza? I mean, like here we were. It was all about Orouge and Radion, right? Uh, and they did an excellent job. Uh, they really need to keep discipline in turn one. Turn one, Monza. Uh, that's what we all kind of, you know, we all dread. Uh, multi-class turn one, Monza. It's going to be absolutely incredible. Uh, so, I, I, like, I'm, I'm just super excited. Whether I'll be commentating or whether I'll be uh, watching it, I'm going to be active in the chat. Uh, I'm, I'm really, you know, I'm, I'm here to do a job, but I'm really becoming a fan of a lot of these drivers. Yeah, my, myself included, and Lawrence looked very easy. Always very easy to. Uh, there was never going to be any problem there. I don't think. It was- yeah, I got told uh, off. I got told off by race control for talking too much at one stage. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> um, no, it's it's been brilliant. Look, it's really really enjoyable. Um, again, I, the only thing I would hope next uh, in two weeks' time uh, for Monza is that we will have a, a really really close uh, LMP2 category. Hopefully, see some of those guys get on their sims, get more some more sim time, uh, and see if they can reel in Timo. That GT3 class is going to be absolutely epic. So look, if you're where would you be? As Jack says, what else would you be at other than sitting down? Half eight Irish time, once again, 20 past eight Irish time. I was a little bit late today. Uh, 20 past eight Irish time, the 27th of October, Wednesday, the 22nd of uh, 7th of October. This day, two weeks, we'll have a bit of a spook fest at Monza. 60 minutes again, endurance around the Temple of Speed. Uh, we hope you would join us for that one. And, and then at the end of the season, an absolutely massive event to take place in the capital of Poland. So until then, it's David Senya. Did, did I mention I won a 24 hour race here? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were muted. <laughs> Good night. Thanks, guys.